Do you ever feel self-conscious that your uniform is just a pair of swimmers? There's been four occasions where I have just wiped, like wiped out, like bad. On my last flip, I landed and I just snapped my ankle. Hi guys, I'm Sam Fricker. Now I've been wanting to get to know you guys a little bit better. So I put out a poll on my Instagram the other day to get some questions from you legends. So today we're gonna to be running through those. To be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I haven't made a proper YouTube video in a while, so I'm excited to get back into it. I am a bit nervous to see this. How long does your hair take to do? It literally takes like five seconds and I do this on set. Like anywhere it has to be done, I just, ready? Boom. Boom, ready to go. How did you break your foot? Well, unfortunately it happened more than once. Now the first time we came back from the Olympics, I hadn't trained in like a month and a half and I was out doing flips for TikTok and on my last flip i landed and i just snapped my ankle and it like bounced back up i knew instantly it was just gone and i went home and it was just throbbing so bad and i had to call my coach to tell him and i sent him the video and he was like sam it's broken and i was like but how, how do you know and he said listen to it you can hear it snap and i went back and hurt and it was it took ages to recover. What is your favorite dive? Okay, so my favorite dive is my inward three and a half. I always put it last in my diving list and that's because whether, I, whether I've had the best comp of my life and I'm about to win, I've had an absolute shocker and I just want to hit a dive before I go home. It's where you stand up on the platform facing forwards, but backwards on the edge. You jump off, rotating forwards three and a half times. You kick out and hopefully, dead vertical with a good sound. What's the highest you've ever jumped from? Ooh, okay. So we went to this rock jump and the waves were like crashing against this rock wall. We were up here, like way on the edge. And what was down below was the ocean. And then you had to swim through like a tunnel to get out. It was terrifying. It was Alex Hayes took us there and he was vlogging. So I was like, oh no, I, I have to jump. I can't not jump, he's vlogging. So we got up there and it was so high and we ended up doing a synchro flip off and we just probably like hit the water and we had to swim through that tunnel. It was about maybe, maybe 16, 17 meters. What's your favorite thing to do outside diving? My favorite thing to do outside diving is like going out, traveling, seeing new places, rock jumping and making content to just document the experience and bring you guys with me. I just, I love it so much. And that's why whenever I have free time, that's what I'm doing. And that's why I have so much to share with you legends. Do you ever feel self-conscious that your uniform is just a pair of swimmers? It's a good question. Ever since I was young, I've always been in like leotards for gymnastics or speedos for diving. So I've really gotten used to it. I did find though, when I've had a month or two off training and I haven't worn speedos in a while and I do get back into them, I do feel a little bit self-conscious, especially from our shape, maybe for a little bit, but then you just get back used to it and you go from there. What's your proudest moment in diving? It'd have to be, Maybe when I qualified for the Olympics, it was just such a dream came true. And I just got out of the pool, ran over, gave my coach a hug, and it was just a really special moment. The other really highlight of my career was from this medal right there. I was in Dresden, Germany. There's a bit of a story to it. My first international comp, I went to Dresden, Germany, and I went in, I was so nervous. I was like kind of intimidated by how good everyone was. And I wasn't sure like how to feel or how they compete. And I ended up going into my, into my event and I did all right, I made the final. Then in the final, I was like trying to do it real perfect. And I messed it up and came like last in the final. And I was just so gutted, I was, I was really devastated. And I just felt horrible that I hadn't performed the way, the way I could. Then I came back to training, you know, worked on my mindset, worked on my dives, learned one of the hardest dives in the world. And I went back to that event in Dresden, Germany, two years later. And in the same event, I went up and I won it by over 50 points. And I was the first Australian to, to ever win that event. And it's a very special moment as well. And it's not just special when you win, but when you get to go over and share it with your team and with your coach and with everyone who, who really got you there to do it and, and just celebrate together, that's, that's what makes it so special. Do you have a girlfriend? No, but my number's hidden somewhere in this clip. So if you can find it, text me. <laughs> or just DM me on Instagram. What's your advice for someone who wants to achieve a big goal? A few things actually. Number one, knowing what you want to achieve and, and writing it down. On my wall, like just here, I have my vision board and my dreams written down. So put it on paper, put it in front of you where you can see it, then take daily action towards that goal. And I found no matter what I wanted to achieve, whether it was a million followers on TikTok or making the Olympics or starting a sustainable company, 
It's by having, having goals and then setting daily steps to achieve it. And you can really do anything you want. If someone else can achieve it, then so can you. And of course, you, you've got to hang around great people. It's the most influential part of your life, who you hang around. Because whether you're having a high and they're making sure you know, they can celebrate with you or you're in a bit of a low and they're the ones that pull you out. Like the people around you are so important. And personally, I believe like people are the most important part of life. So surround yourself with some good legends. How should I go about getting into diving? Okay, well, there's a few things you can do. You can Google your local diving kind of academy and sign up and go in for a session. Or if you want to learn some skills, we may have a possible YouTube video coming out soon. We're gonna line up some of my friends and influencers to come and try diving. So if you've got anyone that you'd suggest or recommend or wanna see on the edge of that diving board, let us know in the comments below. We'll see if we can get them to send it. Would you consider becoming an actor? I've always loved kind of being on camera and making content and things like that. So it's definitely a road I may go down when I'm older. I've done small bits here and there. I actually used to go to a fully selective school for performing arts when I lived up in Newcastle and I, I got in for, for acting. So it's it's a passion of mine, but at the moment my, my sole focus is that diving and creating content. Is diving easier for tall people? That's actually the polar opposite. I'm I'm 184, I think, Sam is. It's like the shorter you are, the easier it is to like whip around all those flips and twists. In fact, when I first came into the Institute, I was worried I was gonna get too tall and they used to measure us. And I'm, every day I'd be like, oh, I'm worried I'm gonna grow. It was like my own mind just like getting the best of me, but it is more hard and challenging that I'm tall, but you make it work. And there was some dives that people said you wouldn't be able to do. And those are some of the hardest dives in the world that I compete today and help me win, win that medal back there. So yeah, it's, it's actually hard. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? It's a great question. And I'm not too sure. And I'm really about planning and setting goals and knowing where I want to go. But I think 10 years is, it's kind of crazy for me, me to think about because I got my diving, I got my social media and the social media just takes me to so many crazy cool places I, I never would have even thought of. So at the moment, I'm focusing on diving and my social stuff and just seeing where it takes me and just run with it. I've got a really open mind for the future and open to many different options and ideas. So I'm focusing on like those two avenues and just really seeing where it takes me and, and just trying to continue doing what I love to do. Any regrets from choosing to be a professional athlete? Well, that's a good one. You miss like a lot of social events, like going out, partying, sometimes even getting to meet new people because it's such a daily grind in terms of day in, day out, morning training, night training. But then you've also got to kind of conserve energy to be in a position that perform properly at training. So you can't just go out late at night after diving and then get up early in the morning to go to training. So maybe no, no regrets because I really enjoy what I do and I'm very grateful to have the life that I have, but you do make sacrifices like not being able to go to parties uh, or going out at night too late or hanging out with friends all day. You gotta make some sacrifices, which I think pay off in the long run. <laughs> yeah. Why did you wanna be a diver? When I was young, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I just wanted to make the Olympic Games. That was my goal. I was doing gymnastics and trampolining at the time. And then a girl I liked was actually diving. So I, I went over and gave it a go. I didn't like it at first because it was outdoors. It was windy. It was cold. I didn't want to be there, but she was there. So I'd, I'd go. And eventually I just got better at it from the gymnastics and trampolining, just transferring over. And then I just made my way up in events. And then I started to think to myself, hey, maybe maybe this could be my, my vehicle to help me achieve my dream of the Olympics. And I've loved it ever since. <laughs> Worst diving fail. Oh, unfortunately, I've had too many. And I think because I post a lot of my good dives, I do try and share some of my fails as well. But I have messed up so many dives so many times, even from the 10 meter. Like there's been four occasions where I have just wiped, like wiped out, like bad. Like to the point where you come out of the water, you can't breathe, you cough up blood. And then I remember once I landed like flat on my back and it like hurt my lungs. So for the next like two weeks, it hurt to breathe. So it's it's very kind of a mental game because after you've done something like that, you've got to get back up and, and keep going. Um, and that, that's hard. That's really challenging. Once I was over in Spain and I failed the dive, landed flat on my back, and it was a second in my list, and I had to go up and, and finish my list. I had to do the last four dives, so that was really hard, physically and, and, and mentally. Are you competing at the Commonwealth Games? 
Commonwealth Games selections are at the end of the month, so we'll find out there. We all go over to Melbourne, and that will be an intense comp because that will decide the next couple of months. So I'm flying from Sydney to Melbourne. If I make the Worlds team and the Commonwealth Games team, I'll go from Melbourne to Canada, and then hopefully from Canada to World Championships, and then we'll be back here for two weeks, then hopefully over to the Commonwealth Games, but all that will be decided by that competition at the end of the month, so. What is your training and diet like? Well, we, we may have some videos coming up surrounding the training, what it's like day in and day out, to share a bit more about more of that, because I think people could really resonate with some of the stuff that we have to do and like small things like getting my coffee every day on the way to training, never miss it. Diet-wise, look, we have dietitians, but for me, as long as I'm in shape, feeling good and diving well, I just, I'm not concerned about my diet too much. I, I don't know if that's good. I have such a sweet tooth, so I love my lollies. Now I try to eat healthy and coming into major events, I eat like more bananas, carrots and water. As a whole, like I don't eat too much bad food, but I just love like lollies and chocolates. So I don't have like a strict regimented diet. I could, but it just kind of adds another layer of like stress and things you've got to worry about, which I just don't think is fully necessary for me at the moment. As long as I can still dive well then. Should be right. <laughs> Who do you look up to? That's a great question. Different people in different areas. Elon Musk is a real inspiration of mine just because he's such a incredible person doing positive things on a major scale, like good things for the environment, good things for the future with space. And I feel like he's someone who's trying to do the right thing by humanity and is extremely influential. So he's definitely someone that I aspire to and, and his work ethic to get so much stuff done. And the way he like delegates things, like you think, okay, how can he run three, four billion dollar companies like that? And it's from like managing incredible people. So I also really respect that about him. In diving, um, Tom Daly is, a, is an icon. We also have like Cubo who won like every international event for so long. So there's a lot of incredible divers out there that I, I'm really inspired by as well. How do you achieve work-life balance? For me personally, like I love what I do so much, there is no work-life balance. I wake up, I go diving, I then work all day, whether it's going out, uh, working on my straw business, or making videos, or filming stuff, I then go back to training, then I come home at night and I just edit until I go to bed. Uh, those, are like, those are like my weekdays, and I love it. So there's no like, I come home and do nothing all the time, it's like, I'm always out kind of doing things, and. People sometimes warn me like about burning out and things like that, but I truly love what I do. So I don't really have a balance of that. I just kind of do, do, what, do what I love to do. Of a weekend though, I try to go out with friends and go explore someone or take my mind off things. So the weekend is kind of the time where I go out and try to clean my mind with things like that. But as a whole during the week, I just put in that work every day because I like to do it and, and it pays off. Reading through all the questions, there was also a lot of people who reached out and just said that I had inspired them or helped them out through certain times and really positive things. So I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for those, those really kind words. And I'm glad that what I love to do can maybe help inspire or just take your mind off the things that you do in your day. So I really appreciate that and hopefully we can keep, keep making good content for, for you legends. All right guys, so that was a q and I want to thank everyone who sent in questions for the videos on the gram. I really appreciate that you want to learn more about me and that I can share with you guys the things that you really want to learn. Now coming up, if you guys have any video suggestions, whether it's more Q&As, you know, it could be a room tour, how I dive, what training's like, or exploring videos, I'd love to hear them. So put them in the comments down below. We're going to be reading every single one. And if you have any good ideas, DM them to me on Instagram and make sure you follow the Instagram. And of course, hit this, hit that subscribe button if I can get my words out. We always appreciate it. And yeah, stick around. We've got some cool stuff coming up. I want to be sharing more with you legends on YouTube. So I'll see you in the next clip. Oh, I made the full circle. <laughs> I don't want to do that.